It's about a temporary ban in some West African countries, particularly um, Ivory Coast. And I've also heard that uh, um, the situation is similar in Benin. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, this is Abdul here from Galaxy Commercial. Uh, I've decided to make this uh, video in a park because um, it's quite lovely today. Uh, the summer has started here in the UK. Uh, this uh, short video is about uh, the situation in West Africa uh, regarding RCN, obviously, uh, like all our previous videos. There's a particular situation which is quite worrying in West Africa. It's about a temporary ban in some West African countries, particularly um, Ivory Coast. And I've also heard that uh, um, the situation is similar in Benin. But uh, Ivory Coast is particularly uh, important to mention, uh, simply because Ivory Coast is the largest uh, producer of uh, raw cashew nuts in uh, West Africa. Uh, potentially in the world, um, even though there are conflicting reports between uh, uh, India production and Ivory Coast production, production. Some will say that India has the highest production, uh, while others will say Ivory Coast. So there's a debate on that. But at least we can say for sure that Ivory Coast is the largest producer in Africa. Therefore, whatever concern Ivory Coast will be an important matter. So uh, currently there's a temporary ban from the Ivory Coast uh, uh, authorities with respect to the export of raw cashew nuts. The reason being local factories need raw material to process uh, and to feed their factories. So um, the government supports uh, uh, local processing they've introduced a temporary ban um, which prevents anybody else to export ASEAN out of Ivory Coast. And you could understand that because uh, a lot of factories have been set up uh, to operate from Ivory Coast because since the country is the largest producer, uh, they should be in a position to, to source easily or have access to raw material to uh, feed their factories. But if there's a situation where they can't access raw material, um, there's a problem. So you can understand what the government is doing it to support. However, uh, there are a lot of uh, very serious consequences for other actors, uh, the exporters, uh, the traders, uh, because it, it just happened during the season. If it has happened before the season started, then people will plan ahead and deal with the season according to those measures but because it happened while the season were, were already on uh, uh, undergoing then um, there is a problem um, as I said if there was a notice uh, a few month warning or if it happened before the season started then um, it wouldn't be a problem but because it happened while the season was already underway then uh, there are a lot of people that are suffering at the moment. Uh, some, for example, they bought since March, they're stuck in warehouses in uh, Abidjan, Abidjan ports, um, and now they are stuck. <laughs> they already purchased it, they can't export it, they can't return it back to the farmer, and so they're stuck in the middle. Um, so, <laughs> and there are many other cases, many other situations like that. This is just one example. So, um, since it's a temporary ban, we hope that uh, uh, the ban will be lifted to allow people to sell their goods. Otherwise, um, uh, it will be very damaging to uh, many operators or businessmen. Um, so, um, I wanted to say those few words about that. Uh, I also heard that uh, there's a similar situation in Benin, uh, but since the production ban but just Ivory Coast. The problem will, won't be as severe as in um, in Cote d'Ivoire. All right. Uh, the other thing also is that because there's the, a shortage of production this year, um, the the demand, the supply has been low. 
or uh, at least lower than the demand uh, and the direct consequence of that is that uh, the price has gone really high in in Vietnam in um, in India um, and, and and it's quite uh, it's quite tough and also in West Africa uh, the pricing is going up every time uh,